Good morning. Thank you for the invite to share a few thoughts with you this morning around Psalm 150. When I started to look at this at the end of last week, I had to smile a little wryly to myself. It was the end of a long week and both within work and the wider world, I have to say it had been a difficult week. To help me in my thinking, I did my usual thing of going out for a walk. I love walking. It gives me space. It helps to recenter my thoughts. It changes my perspective on all that is going on around me and within me. I live in London and the beauty of London is the numerous parks that we have to walk around. Nothing that compares to the stunning highlands of Scotland, but just good green spaces. And in that walking and in seeing the changing colours of autumn and the smiles on children's faces, I was again reminded of things to praise God for. Psalm 150 is the final psalm in the Psalter. It comes at the end of an amazing book of songs, songs of joy, of lament, of history, of faithfulness. Songs that would have been sung on the journey to the temple, songs even of confession. The depth of teaching the depth of life that is described in these words is amazing. They take us on this journey from deep crying out to the Lord to places of highest praise. If to look at Psalm 126, we have described there someone who speaks about that they go on his way weeping and yet returns with songs of joy. It's this constant up and down of life. And then we get to the end of the book and we have this amazing psalm of praise. This psalm is easily broken down into parts. Simply, who do we praise? Where do we praise? Why do we praise? How do we praise? And finally, who does the praising? Yep, it's certainly a five point sermon there, isn't it? Which could sound a little excessive, but I promise we're not gonna do 15 minutes on each point. But who do we praise? Well, the psalmist makes it very clear that we praise God. That's the opening sentence. Praise the Lord. No ifs or buts. No list of alternative gods to praise. First and foremost, God is the object of our praise. If I had to choose a song that has occupied my waking thoughts since March, it would actually be the song. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. It's a Hillsong song. There's a line in the song which says, You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Nothing or no one can get in the way of our praise to God. It's a real question that we each have to think about, though. Is God the centre of our praise? What might be the rivals in our lives that get in the way of God being the centre of our praise? The psalmist uh, goes on to speak about where we praise God and that place, as the scripture says, is in his sanctuary, in his highest heavens. I'm sure the majority of us would interpret the word sanctuary as our physical place of worship. Those of us from the Salvation Army are still used to saying that we're going to the hall or we might speak about the main hall to describe where we have our worship. But for some, they would use the word sanctuary to describe their worship place. But however we describe it, let's be honest, we sure have missed that gathered worship space, haven't we? There's something very precious and powerful when the people of God come together in worship. God is present. But what this time has shown is that we can obviously praise God wherever. We are not confined to buildings. God, thankfully, is not confined to buildings. But wherever we are, we can lift our praises to him. Those who know me well know that I love to sing. I have to say I would never be told to sing louder in a choir, more likely to sing a little quieter if truth 
were told. Because I am a rather enthusiastic singer and worshipper, when I am in worship, something resonates deep within me and many times I want to burst into praise. So not being in corporate worship, yeah, it's been tough as it has for many, many people. But you know what? I've made the most of those moments I've been out in the car and I've had the music turned up loud and singing at the top of my voice. Or in the house, probably not quite as loud because you've got to have a bit of respect for your neighbours, haven't you? But it's that thing, isn't it? We can praise God wherever we are. In the car, the street, the shower, over Zoom. Because God is present and loves to hear the praises of his children. And why? Why do we praise? It's so simple, isn't it? Because God is great. We could make a list, couldn't we, of why do we praise God? I challenge you, even as you listen to this, to write a list of why you praise God. And here are some words to help that list. God is great. He is good. He is all powerful. He is almighty. He is our father, our shepherd, our friend. God is with us. He is love. And so that list could go on and on. It's such a simple thing to do, but at times when the storm is raging, when we find it hard to praise, we have to remind ourselves, don't we, of who God is and why we praise him. So how do we praise? Well, the psalmist goes on to describe how we praise God and lists all these different ways by trumpet, harp, lyre, tambourines, dancing, strings, pipes, cymbals. And I would imagine if they knew all the amazing instruments we have, they would have probably have included them too. This isn't some legalistic list. It's about basically saying, use all you have to praise God, to celebrate, to have a party. You can imagine it's like some massive praise party of those bringing glory to God through their worship. It's in that offering of all we have, our music, our dance, our creativity, and giving it back to God as an act of praise. Sometimes we've been guilty of putting the ability to play the instrument in front of offering our praise to God as it should be. Above all else, all that we do is to bring praise to God. The final part, part of the psalm says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So that's me and you then, isn't it? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And it's a question we need to think about real simply. How good are we at praising the Lord? For some, it does seem to come quite naturally, doesn't it? They seem to be forever the optimist. Their glass is not just half full, it's overflowing, isn't it? And then you get that the middle people, yes, yeah, their glass is half full. They can look for the good in things, but it's probably a, a little bit more measured, a, a little bit, bit more healthy in some ways. And then we know we get the glass half empty folk. And we probably all know uh, one or two of those two. But the truth of the matter is that God calls each of us to praise him, whether we feel like it or not. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 2 to 16, that, that's Habakkuk, minor prophet in the Old Testament. Habakkuk, though, describes a disaster coming on the nation of Judah that would, in effect, destroy the country. But he goes on to say, in verse 17 and 18, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, 
and the fields produce no food. Though there, no, there are no sheep in the sheepfold and no cattle in the stores, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. Did you hear it? Did you hear the small but very powerful word, yet? In effect, Habakkuk is saying, even if everything is taken away, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Saviour. There are times in our lives when we have to make the deliberate choice to worship and praise God, to count our blessings, even when it's the last thing we want to do. There's that great song, uh, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord, which speaks about praising God in the amazing times, but also in the times of trial, when we're in that desert space. Personally, I've started during this past year a gratitude journal. At the end of the day, I reflect on the day and write in there what I'm grateful to God for. And yes, there are some days when I have to make a more deliberate effort than others. But the beauty of it means that when it, that when it is hard, when I'm struggling, I can look back and see where God has been at work. I'm reminded of God's faithfulness to me. And yes, I can praise him. If the storm is raging in your life right now, I encourage you, like Habakkuk, to name the storm and to also go, and yet, I will rejoice in God, my Saviour. It's an amazing statement of faith. Always remember, God is with you in the storm. And when you have little energy to praise, tell him, because he understands. Praise the Lord. Amen.